Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. I find myself in one of my favorite places. Uh, it's a favorite place of mine because, yes, as you can see, um, it's, a, it's missing a couple letters because they're getting, I think they're getting re, uh, redone, uh, but it is the school office. It's one of my favorite places because just about every day I get to have the privilege of being able to serve in this place. I get to have the privilege of being able to uh, meet and greet uh, families and being able to see, uh, most importantly, kids grow. Um, and uh, but uh, what does this have? I'm not here just because it's one of my favorite places. Um, I'm here because John chapter one, um, in this last part of John uh, chapter one, is talking all about discipleship, and this is why it's one of my favorite places. Uh, it's because from pre-K three, from three years old, all the way to eighth grade, to thirteen years old, fourteen years old, we get to see ten years of formation, ten years of identity building, uh, of being able to uh, rejoice that the identity is that they're a child of God, that Jesus loves them, and that they're going to have a great education, and they're going to be able to be successful in math and science and, and literature and all these core subjects and even the fine arts and all those kind of different things. Uh, but it's all based out of the gifts and talents and the identity that we are a child of God, that he's given us the abilities, that he's given us uh, the way of discipleship. That's why it's really my favorite place. Um, yes, the people are amazing in it. Uh, the, the teachers, the administration, uh, the families, the children, uh, great and everything. But we, I, the reason why it's my favorite place is because of the disciple-making reality. Uh, hundreds, thousands of kids coming through here, being able to hear about Jesus every single day, uh, celebrate and worship together in those chapels, um, being able to uh, have a teacher that cares and loves for them, uh, cares and loves for them, not just about their grades, who cares and loves for them as a person and as uh, to identify that they are a child of God and precious in his sights. Uh, one of the favorite things, I just want to share this story with you, um, is uh, it always uh, just uh, catches me off guard, but it just excites me so much, I guess. It doesn't really catch me off guard because I know it's coming, but uh, when I give like memory quizzes um, to the eighth grade, um, in the later parts of their years here at St. Paul, um, when they have a quiz, they could have some maybe extra points or extra uh, credit um, on their quizzes um, if they write, frankly, a motto. And the motto uh, for St. Paul is, I'm a redeemed child of God, and I'm going to honor him in all that I do. And one of the amazing things, you get to see that they write their name, and then they're, I'm a redeemed child of God, and I honor him in all that I do. Uh, but one of the greatest stories I heard a couple years ago was uh, when we send them out into the world, yes, into high school after the eighth grade year, um, the report back was uh, even on a quiz in high school in the public system, uh, they wrote their name and then they wrote, I'm a redeemed child of God and will honor him in all that I do. A beautiful reality because discipleship is about formation. Discipleship is, yes, about repetition, uh, but it is really about identity. Who am I and what has God called me to be? And that's the beautiful thing about John chapter 1. That's why I don't open up our Bibles to John chapter 1. Let's read together. We're starting in verse 35, ending us here at the end of chapter 1, and we'll go into chapter 2 uh, tomorrow. It says this um, in verse 35. The next day, John, John the Baptist, was there again, there being on the east side of the Jordan, baptizing, gathering people. Um, he was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, now I want to just catch this again because we did it yesterday, John stepping aside so that Jesus gets all the main focus, right? Uh, but the reality here is uh, he does it day after day. Whenever he sees Jesus, look, 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 go to him. <laughs> don't, don't worry about me, go to him. He says this the next day, when he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following him and asked, what do you want? <laughs> and it always makes me chuckle, uh, being able to say, what do you want? We just want to follow you. Uh, so they had to come up with a, a question. They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, a great a sign of respect, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. Come and see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the 10th hour, which is about 4 p.m. in the afternoon. 
Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two. So we don't get the names of the second one. Uh, some people believe it, that it uh, uh, perhaps could be uh, the, the author, John, of the Gospel, the Apostle John. Um, that's, that's tough to see because he's usually up with Zebedee, his dad, on the Galilee. So um, there's disparity there. We don't know who that other disciple is, but we, know, we do find out one of the disciples, and his name was Andrew. Andrew's an amazing guy. Listen to what happens. Simon Peter's brother was one of the two who had heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. So he doesn't get much attention. He's actually Simon Peter's brother. All right, but Andrew does an amazing thing. He says, verse 41, the first thing, first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, brought Peter, his brother, to Jesus. Just as John steps aside and says, hey, go follow Jesus. So Andrew, being a disciple now, following Jesus, does what a disciple does. Goes to others and says, come and see. We have found the Christ. Come and be and follow Jesus. He brought Peter to Jesus. Jesus looked at Peter and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. And I think we all know that, but I'm going to re recap that real quickly again. Peter means little pebble or rock. And we get to see that in Matthew chapter 16 as we did devotions uh, some time ago in Matthew chapter 16. Uh, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Right? His confession. Uh, that Peter is this rock, this confessional rock, this foundation of what the church is going to be all about, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Well, within this, we get to see that that's just not true, what we get to see in the rest of this gospel of Peter. Peter is not a rock. He is not stable. <laughs> he is unstable. He's back and forth saying these things, doing these things, being called out by Jesus, disowning Jesus. What's this rock speaking towards well, Jesus says, you are Cephas, you are the rock. That's what you will become. But I'm going to form and shape you for that. You see, he doesn't say that he's the rock now. But he says, you are Peter. And on my church, I will build. Right? So in Acts, Peter becomes this foundation, this rock of the confession that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so... That's a, this is something that discipleship does. That's what I love about reading in John chapter 1 what Jesus does for his disciples. He says, yeah, he calls them, come and see. Um, and when, as you come and see, I'm going to form and shape you to be those confessional rocks for people around you. may not be right now, but hang around Jesus for a while. Be a disciple of Jesus for a while. You'll become more stable about trusting who Jesus is. Jesus continues to go farther. He goes in verse 43. He says, The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee, go up north. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Ah, it's up in Galilee. Good meaning uh, of purpose of God. Nathaniel asked. And Philip does an amazing thing as a disciple of Jesus, as what he kind of bids us to do as a disciple of Jesus. He says, come and see. An easy invitation. You have questions? You have doubts? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip doesn't say, oh yeah, absolutely, I saw him do this, this. No, 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 he just says something simple that we as disciples can do as well. Hey, come and see. As a disciple of Jesus, it's, it's incredible for us to be as disciples, to make disciples. And to do an easy invitation is this. Come and see what God is doing. We might invite them. Come and see what God is doing at St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. Be a part of our worship. Be a part of our Bible studies. You can invite that and just do that easy. Come and see. Or, if it's not something into the campus or to the, to the church, you can just actually as a disciple say, come and see what God is doing in my life. And you can form and shape and you can see that as a disciple of Christ, the more and more that they're around disciples of Christ, around Jesus, he's going to form and shape them as a disciple as well. Great invitation that Philip gives us here. Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. Wow, great high standard there. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. <laughs> Then Nathaniel declared, whoa, this is something amazing. Rabbi, teacher, you are a son of God, and you are the king of Israel. Wow. Jesus said, you believe because 
you, I told you that I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And he brings them back to their ancestor. He brings them back to Israel, right? Because Jacob was the one that saw the angels ascending and descending on that ladder. And he was named from, he was switched from Jacob to Israel. Now you are Israel. You wrestled with God. That's who my people are going to be. They're going to wrestle with God. They're going to be formed and shaped into a community that has God as their top priority, that God alone is their salvation. And so he brings them back to that descendant, and he says, I'm going to bring you forward. You're going to see greater things. You're going to see the kingdom of God come to its fruition, that Jesus is going to be, that you're going to, he's going to see miracles and amazing things, that Jesus is the Son of God. And so you believe because I called you or, frankly, read your mind, you're going to see greater things than that. That's why I've seen, that's why it's amazing what I get to see on a daily basis, the formation and disciple-making that the school does, and it just is amazing thing. I, I, I thank God that I get to see greater things happening every single day in the lives of families. Um, and it's been tough in these times. It's been uh, stress <laughs> in these times, distance learning and uh, having no interaction. Uh, that's hard within disciple making uh, because it's all about the relationship. Uh, but God saw it fit for this time to be able to put into the home the way of disciple making. So every single day, the teachings went into the home. Uh, the Word of God went into the home. And uh, God has purposed it so that as a family, you can be formed and shaped as a family, as a disciple maker. But at this day, I know uh, we're running over a little bit, and I apologize for that. But uh, uh, it is my favorite place, so I have a little bit of passion around it. But a passion around discipleship. Come and see what God is doing in my life. Come and see what God is doing in the church. A great invitation uh, for those that may not know um, what God is doing in their life. But let's pray over that. Um, we've been taking these daily devotions to end in a word of prayer. Let's pray over the families, yes, of this school. Uh, pray over the families of this community um, uh, that God is forming and shaping as disciples. But also, let's pray over the bravery and the courage for us to be the disciples with that easy invitation to say, come and see what God is doing around you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for sending Jesus Christ into our world to seek and save the lost, and as he's called his disciples, as we see in John chapter 1, he called them to form and shape them for what you have in mind for their lives. You've called and you shaped and formed us. You've called us by the gospel. You've enlightened us with the gifts. You've sent your Holy Spirit to empower us to be disciples. And so, Father, we pray to you as disciples, following you and you alone. Help us to invite. Help us to explore the people around us. Uh, to be able to just give that incredibly easy invitation. Come and see what God is doing in my life, in our church, in the world. Yes, it can be hard to see at this time, Lord, uh, but you are doing something great and grand in and through us, even in amongst a time of stress, even amongst a time of pandemic. And so, Lord, we ask you to be with the families of the school as they come into the summer. Protect them, keep them safe. Uh, we ask you if they're traveling uh, to just have mercies upon them. Uh, Lord, we ask you that you just make way in the summer months uh, so that we can come back to school in a normal, uh, in somewhat of a new normal way, uh, but that we can be together interacting and being able to invite and uh, have others come and see daily what this school can do in disciple making. We thank you for the privilege that it is to be disciples of Jesus, making others disciples. Bless us as we're brave and courageous and just continuing to follow and be faithful to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Disciples of Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus loves you. He forgives you. He is always with you. You know what that is? That's discipleship. To just always remember, be disciplined in reminding yourself that God is for us. He is not against us, but rather he loves us in Jesus. Have a blessed day.